Und für den hier. Hier Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hi, welcome back to World Zakat Forum webinar series. My name is Astika Ramagani from Secretariat of World Zakat Forum. Uh, I'm the moderator on this session today and I feel, I think uh, it is my privilege to welcome you all on behalf of World Zakat Forum webinar series. I would like to thank you for joining us today for this special dialogue and on the necessity of zakat teaching at the university. I think it would be very interesting topic to be discussed today and it is going to be a great one hours of online interactions and learning for all of us. Today we have uh, two fabulous speakers here who I will be introducing shortly. The uh, Professor Mehmet Asutai. Uh, he is uh, the professor of Middle Eastern and Islamic Political Economy and Finance at the Durham University Business School. Uh, he was also as the director of the Durham Center in Islamic Economics and Finance, the director for uh, Master of Science in Islamic Finance and Master of Science in Islamic Finance and Management programs, and also the director of the Durham Islamic Finance Summer School. Assalamualaikum, Prof. How are you today? Assalamualaikum, Salam. It's good to be here, uh, although in distance, but good to see you all as well. Alhamdulillah, uh, great. And then, well, we have another speaker. She is Dr. Fatmawati <coughs> Ibrahim as Associate Professor at the Faculty of Technology, Management and Business, University Tun Hussein on Malaysia. She is also a, a research fellow at the Institute Al-Sunnah Wal Jama'ah. Her, speciali her spe specializations are in the areas of development economics, related to poverty and income distributions and Islamic economics, especially in economics of zakat, wakaf, and Islamic finance. Assalamualaikum, doctor. How are you? Fine. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, well, before we started this session today, let me explain a little bit about how we run the program. First, we will discuss the topic and there will be explanations from both of speakers. After hearing the panel's perspective, then there will be ask and question sessions. For those who want to give the questions, especially from the audience at home, for your information, the questions will be taken from YouTube chat box. So you may type the questions and chat box on the chat box below. I mean, we, uh, I will select several questions to read on air. Is it clear, doctor and professor? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Alhamdulillah. And now, uh, talking about the teaching itself, it is not only focused on intellectual development, will be more emphasized on the process of coaching and personality development of students overall. That is purpose of education. It is to change behavior and attitudes of students from negative to positive. And the, we will discuss how important of teaching zakat in the university? Why do we should introduce zakat among the students? How important of zakat itself? I mean, uh, in your perspective, please welcome Prof. Mehmet. The floor is yours. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Um, it's good to be here and thank you for the um, invitation as well as organizing this event. It's a very specific area um, and therefore I guess um, this um, opportunity space created by COVID has given us to explore all these very specific areas through the participants coming from different parts of the world without traveling. Um, so Zekat in itself um, is an um, amazing the detail and complicated subject and then the teaching of that. In recent um, recent um, events, the pandemics have demonstrated has demonstrated that the importance of uh, the social well-being. Um, in other words, um, the one's well-being is directly linked to other people's well-being. That is clearly identified as an important criteria for what for us, which of course Islamic um, economics, or as I call it, Islamic moral economy, has been essentializing. In other words. Uh, the pandemic has demonstrated that if I want to be um, healthy, the other people have to be healthy as well. 
So direct link and the functional in terms of functionality, my health and well-being is a function of other people's health and well-being. So <clears throat> having this uh, direct is suggests the importance of socialization, as we call it. In other words, um, when it comes to wealth um, and the use of wealth, how the socialization is an important factor. In other words, uh, in other words, rather than maximizing my own, in order to ensure also the other people are well. Um, I have to be socializing and hence using the wealth that I created for the purpose of father. And therefore, in our economics teach, Islamic economics teaching, we have been um, talking about zakat, um, but it is very much um, just passing by. As an, as an, and nowadays we refer that as um, Islamic social finance. I am not very much convinced with the use of Islamic social finance because this is not finance as such. And therefore, that distinction has to be made. But um, in, in now, it has become a common usage that we use the word um, Islamic social finance. Um, but in our teaching, when I look at um, most of the teaching, as, as I mentioned, that the teaching related zakat is very much um, on the either um, in terms of uh, in fuck. Um, in contributing others, um, or in terms of Islamic social finance, or within the context of SDGs. However, zakat in itself, I think, deserves a proper treatment in our research as well as in um, in our teaching. Now, in, um, because when we look at um, an important part of zakat in terms of teaching and research is missing, that is the the whole moral economy of zakat or Islamic economics of zakat. I call it moral economy. Therefore, the whole Islamic moral economy of zakat, what do we mean by that, how it operates, how it works. And therefore, um, our programs heavily on the financial part are looking at the Islamic finance, and that refers to the, um, the interest prohibition. But when we look at in Quran, um, in terms of economics and finance, uh, we see a lot of normative um, normative positions, a lot of propositions, but, but these are normative, being just, for instance, in the distribution and etc. in our trade, in our businesses. But two things are importantly identified, not the, um, as, a, as a norm, but as a, as a direct requirement as part of religiosity, that is prohibition of interest is directly identified in the Quran when it comes to economics and financial matters and the paying of zakat. So these two, but our um, heavy emphasis has, has been on the prohibition side of the interest, which is of course essential because it is identified in the Quran. Um, and the zakat part, we have been very much um, only um, serving the lip services. We have not been um, able to go into in detail and discuss because we left that area entirely for fuk related aspects. In other words, who should pay, how it should be paid, and etc. but not the economics and the uh, socioeconomic nature of that. And therefore, um, on the one hand, riba, on the other hand, zakat, I think constitutes the political economy of Islam, as I call it. Because both of them are related with capital and the ownership and the production. Okay, uh, so on the riba, by prohibiting of riba, you are bringing the hegemony of capital to the same level with other stakeholders. So you are establishing equality. Yes. So you are saying to the capital that look, because you have the capital, you cannot be dominant over the other factors of production. So you have to come to the same level. So the Tawhidi understanding of equalizing between different, establishing equilibrium between different stakeholders is important with the prohibition. But the second part of that equation is the zakat part. When we look at zakat, again, we only consider zakat as charitable giving um, in the sense of part of the infarct. But um, I think zakat is more than that. Um, it is not simply a charitable giving in the sense that I am charitable, I want to contribute, and therefore I am giving. No, it is not my right um, to give away. It is the right of the society that has to be given to the society. So therefore, it is not a charitable giving. It is directly what we call part of the Islamic uh, modes of production. When we refer to modes of production, it is how the resources are located, how the production function, if we use the neoclassical term of production function, within the, ne um, within the production function, you have um, capital, you have labor, 
um, in the very narrow sense. However, Islam suggests that that has to be extended. You cannot limit only to capital and labor. So you have to have other stakeholders. Um, in addition to capital, you need to have the human effort. Um, you need to have land, uh, environment, and importantly, society. Society is an important factors, uh, factors among the um, other factors in the modes of production. In other words, factors of production cannot be limited to only land, labor, capital, but has to be extended to, to, uh, to, to, to consider other stakeholders in the society. And that stakeholder with zakat, Islam determined that society is a stakeholder. Okay, you cannot exclude. Therefore, the uh, source of zakat comes in the production. Therefore, um, capital will um, earn the return. The human effort will get the wages, land and environment will get. And what is left for the society is the zakat, is the right of society directly uh, derived from the modes of production and produced out of that process. And, and therefore, uh, zakat is not a simple charitable giving or almsgiving, uh, but it is directly related to the surplus that is produced, economic surplus that is produced in the production process, and it goes as the right of society. Now, how society becomes a stakeholder in that? Because whatever created as a resource is created by Allah for everyone to cons everyone to have access. But because of the private ownership, so these resources are allocated to people who have the money, who bought it and operating and producing surplus. However, everyone has right on all those resources. And therefore the right of that, um, you know, the ownership, everything that belongs to Allah, but Allah created those for everyone to have access. And because of the private production, society is excluded from that process. And therefore, zakat directly ensure that the right of those people who have a right on the available resources in the society should be returned to them. So as we can see, the economics of zakat is very detailed and it, it produces a particular political economy, how we organize the resource allocation in the society, how the production function through modes of production is organized. Um, however, um, uh, in the current um, situation, while we have been giving a lot of effort to look into how prohibition of interest related aspect can be dealt with, unfortunately, zakat related debates is very simple. Um, and it is only left to fuck rather than developing this economics, the moral economy understanding of zakat. And therefore, bringing this as, as part of teaching um, to our Islamic finance programs is an essential part of the Islamic economics of, or the Islamic moral economy that has to be taught properly with the with the uh, entire understanding of economics of it. When I look at the research published mostly in this Zakat, unfortunately, what we see, the reputation of the same thing, the fuck of it, um, uh, what is Zakat, um, who are the receivers, and etc. But this is a very simple treatment. So we have to go beyond that, consider Zakat as a, as a whole moral economy, as a political economy issue, and bring to our class uh, to debate this, uh, rather than just putting um, entire emphasis on the prohibition of um, interest that is essential as mentioned in the Quran, but the other part of what is mentioned directly in the Quran is zakat, because the other issues are normatively mentioned, such as we have to be just in our dealings, we have to look after the contractual issues and etc. but two issues quantitatively mentioned in the Quran that is um, prohibition of interest and the zakat. And therefore, and both of them directly linked because of the relationship um, to the um, to the capital, and therefore um, this session is particularly important. But at the same time, of course, uh, looking at uh, e emerging research, uh, such as uh, Baznas have been carrying out all this research as well, uh, having a particular journal on the uh, issue. But how we can bring zakat to the class to teach, and therefore develop the next generation of students and individuals who are going to work in the field, not only treating zakat as an outcome of our um, economic activity, but directly linked to the, the political economy of Islam and how that can be articulated. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Mahmoud, for the
very uh, insightful explanations. And then, uh, Dr. Patamati, do you have anything to convey regarding to this uh, topic? All right. Uh, thank you, uh, Astika. Uh, we have heard from uh, Prof. Mehmet about the, the issue. And I'm very much interested with the question that you forward to us just now. That is on the importance of teaching Zakat in university. Why do we introduce and how important Zakat is in itself? Okay. Uh, actually, these are the very basic issues. That when we are talking about Zakat, this is the very basic issues. But let me tell you, even though this is a very basic issue, but it is very significant in society, okay? Okay, uh, I would like to answer the question first. <coughs> uh, your third question, actually, Astika, that is on the importance of zakat itself. And why do we introduce zakat? It seems that this is the foundation of the issue, okay? Very, very uh, basic issues, as I said just now. But we need to ensure, we need to know that actually, uh, zakat is one of the pillars of Islam, and we know that everyone to be, uh, everybody wants to be a perfect Muslim. So at the same time, what do they do is that they wanted to fulfill all the obligations so as to make them a perfect Muslim. And apart from that, zakat itself is a type of social obligation. Okay, it is an ibadah which has a social implication on it. Okay, if you don't pray you don't affect anyone, you don't affect anybody, okay? But if you don't pay zakat, there might be a people starving there if you don't pay zakat. So that is why I think it is very important to educate people to pay zakat, okay? So, and we, in the, do we really need to teach zakat at the university? This is another issue, another question that we are to answer uh, according to the topic provided to us, okay? So do you do we really need to uh, teach zakat at the university? Okay, and the, the next question is why do we need to teach zakat at the university, okay? And from my experience, I have uh, uh, something to share with you about the teaching of zakat at the university. Well, I was a graduate of IIUM, International Islamic University of Malaysia. I did my first and second degree there. And I live in a situation where everyone is very positive with Islamic economics. Everyone is very positive with zakat. Nobody will say that Islamic economy is not good. Nobody will say that zakat is not good, okay? And that is on my uh, study background. When I start working, I started my career. Again, I joined the University of Malaya at the Academy of Islamic Studies. Okay, still the environment is very positive towards Islamic economics and very positive towards zakat. But when I started my, I did my PhD in my first, uh, my first semester's class, I, I was faced a question in a best lecture, there's one lady professor, Muslim lady professor, telling in class, I would say yelling, not telling in class. She told us that the best economic system is capitalist economic system. Who said, uh, some says that Islamic economics is the best economic system. It is just a rhetoric. That was her statement. And I was so quiet there. I was quite shocked because this, it was the first time I confronted people, I met people who was very negative with Islamic economics. And I plan to do my, my uh, PhD in Zakat there, and I think I cannot proceed. So I went back to my supervisor, okay, back driving, I was crying, and I met my supervisor the next day. I said, Prof, I have to quit. Why? Uh, he asked me why. I said, I don't think I can work for Islamic economics here. I said, uh, what more to do Zakat? And what did my professor say? He said that, Fatma, take it as a da'wah work on you. That was his said. And from then on, I realized that, yes, we need to educate people on zakat, okay? So where is it? Why it is at the university? Well, because it is believed that at the university, the multiplying effect is bigger as compared to other places. We expect that the students that we teach, students we taught on, Islam, on Islamic economics, we are teaching students on zakat, these students, they will go out and they will spread, they will educate outside people, they will educate the society with zakat. If we don't educate the people with zakat, how many people do you think that know about zakat and going to pay zakat? Okay, what more? feel that they are uh, entitled for zakat distribution, for example. So this is very important. My other case is that, okay, uh, 
uh, not my other case, but the question is how to teach zakat at the university. Okay, how to teach zakat at the university? You cannot just go and teach zakat like that, but you need to have a platform. There are two situations, okay? The first situation is where if your university provide a platform for you to have uh, a course in zakat. For example, uh, in my stay at the University of Malaya, I was at the Academy of Islamic Studies and I was at the Department of Sharia and Economics Department. So I can introduce zakat course there, okay? So that is what we did. That is what I did. In 2004-2005, if I'm not mistaken, we introduced one course, Zakat Economics, okay? So there is a platform there. We can teach Zakat Economics there. And apart from that, being an Academy of Islamic Studies, they have a course of Fiq Zakat there, okay? So we expect that the community there, at the Academy of Islamic Studies community, they know Zakat. But the situation changed when I go to my other university. The situation changed where I have no opportunities to, uh, to teach zakat to the students, okay? I went to the university, which is a, a technical university, okay? So there's no subject which I can put zakat in it, okay? So how to teach zakat? So in that case, I understand that there are two ways of teaching zakat at the universities. One is through formal, where we can create a course, okay? We have a course, offering a course in zakat. And another one is through informal. Informal is how to do that. Informal. Uh, it can just be a call. Can it just be a lecture series or what? Okay. But what did I do here? I mean, what did I experience here is that action speaks louder than words. Okay. So that is why we suggested the university to do the zakat collection through salary deduction. And it is not easy to come to that stage when you can make it compulsory for the staff to pay zakat through salary deduction. And through this one, I met another situation where it inspired me to teach, to educate people, to educate the society with zakat more. Okay, we, from the environment that, I from the environment that, everyone is very positive about zakat, everyone is very positive about Islamic economics, and we assume that everyone knows about zakat, knows about Islamic economics, all those things. We think that zakat payment is settled, zakat distribution is settled in the situation in the society, but situa the situation is not that one. Okay, so when we started to implement, we started to uh, suggest to the university to do zakat deduction from the salary of the staff. Okay, this is where we meet various situations. There are lots of kind people, kind-hearted people. They pay their taxes, they cut their salary to pay waka but they do not know that actually it is obligation, it is wajib for them to pay zakat on uh, on income, okay? And we, when we say that, well, everybody need to pay who is entitled to pay zakat, they are, uh, they are obliged for them, wajib for them to pay zakat from their income. And this thing, what happened to this person, he kept quiet and he was shocked. He said that, I pay, I pay wakaf, I make salary deduction for Waka, I make for charity, I make in part, I go back hometown, go back to my hometown, I do charity distribution, he said, I help people, but I don't pay zakat. I was quite shocked and he was so upset uh, with this situation. Then on then I understand that there's a lot of people who are not aware of zakat that it is wajib to them. So that is why I think it is very important to teach zakat, to teach zakat, not only at the university, but only at the out there to the society. Make everyone aware that zakat is compulsory to them, okay? And what happened is that most of them know that zakat is compulsory, they pay zakat, but they only pay zakat titra. They do not pay on zakat on income and any other types of zakat, okay? So that is why if you are asking me, is it necessary to teach zakat? Yes, I said necessary to, to teach zakat, but not only at the university. Why at the university? As I said just now, maybe because of the multiplying effect of teaching zakat as the university is bigger as compared to if you teach zakat out there. But to me, yes, it is important to teach zakat to the people, to create awareness of zakat among the people, okay? And it is not only at the uh, collection site, but also at the distribution side. Both the side, the collection and distribution, we need to educate people and it has to be balanced, okay? 
All right, so I think that's my 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 point on this issue. Oh, uh, thank you for uh, interesting explanations. According to the human resource issue in Zakat institutions uh, or a charity agency, there is I think there is a gap among it uh, because a number of human resource are not still qualified enough to manage Zakat. Most of Zakat institutions is not managed professionally. So regarding to this issue, uh, do you have solutions to be offered in the university? Prof. Mehmet, please explain it to um, us. I think, I think we have to make a distinction in terms of the human resources need for the Zakat institutions and others. <laughs> And that distinction is one on the operational side. The other one is the uh, strategy and the development side. The operational side, perhaps you do not need to have very well qualified people directly from um, Zakat. So those any 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 individual who have um, certain understanding of it, a university degree of um, relating to any operational aspect, whether economics, finance, or management, can can be the, um, would be able to deal with that part of the question. However, I think the, the main issue for us here to consider um, how um, Zakat-related policies that we can develop. And that's the important part of the um, narrative that we have to look into in terms of resource development. In other words, um, most of the effort so far has been paid, as I mentioned in the beginning, on the uh, distribution of the allocated Zakat, how that can be distributed. Uh, but we have not been able to develop the necessary capacity, how we can increase, increase the capacity of zakat in the society, and also by looking at how we can <clears throat> create a particular theory and through which we can develop the necessary policies out of that. And that, uh, I think, requires a lot of research and therefore developing new generation of individuals who could be the managers of um, zakat institutions um, is our major concern in terms of the human resources. Otherwise, on the operational side, I'm not very much concerned because um, any individual with the qualification, any qualification would be able to deal. Now, for the, um, for the um, new generation of leaders um, or the managers of these institutions, um, there is a huge need of, um, because the universities are not providing the very specific um, education in um, Zakat, and therefore there is a huge need for training, developing the mindset uh, of these individuals when, when they want to join or they want to prepare themselves to join Zakat institutions. I think they have to go through this training about Zakat. But again, when I refer to the training and the education, I don't want to see, again, this individual are trained only on the fuck side of the issues. In other words, whom should the zakat would be given, how it can be dispersed, and et cetera. But at the same time, to understand the moral economy, the economics, the political economy of zakat, and therefore, they should be able to look into the essence of the issues and how they can develop policies. One. Uh, creating the necessary funds and encouraging the society, how we can encourage the society to pay their zakat, to uh, develop necessary strategies, how development-oriented policies can be developed out of these zakat funds and the, and the institutions. And therefore, on the one hand, therefore, it requires a good training in the moral economy of zakat, uh, or, or education for that matter, uh, and then um, have to translate those onto policies in terms of having some development understanding and um, economics of development, because these are three important things. In order to develop strategies, how the accumulated zakat funds can be utilized effectively uh, to reduce um, zakat, for instance, sorry, to, re to reduce poverty in the society is an important issue. And therefore, when we look at the fuck of zakat, is very detailed uh, because at the end of the day, the whole objective, the Islamic objective, Islamic moral economy objective with the zakat or giving of the zakat, on the one hand, emancipating individuals and empowering individuals. Hence, our policies and strategies of the institutions that we are talking, zakat institution, have to essentialize that our objective is the emancipate and empower. But on the other hand, and interestingly, <clears throat> because it is part of the pillar of Islam, uh, giving zakat is an emancipation as well. You have to return the right of the society. 
So therefore, we have to develop this mindset in the individuals. And therefore, the Zakat institutions, at the same time, they have to provide the necessary awareness and training to the society that, look, this is not your right. It is the right of society, because by definition of the production, um, uh, pro uh, modes of production that has to be returned to society as the right of society. And therefore, you are talking about the leadership and the management who have the understanding of the both sides of the equation. On the one hand, on the one hand, how um, the individuals on the society in daily everyday life can understand the essence of zakat, not on, not only a charity, but directly out of the production and the modes of production, uh, and therefore it's an emancipation for those people who give because they have to give up what is not theirs. They have to cleanse it, and that's the Quranic understanding. On the other hand, um, we have the um, accumulated funds, how to use the accumulated funds again to emancipate individual, to, to emancipate them from poverty and to empower them through providing the zakat funds, but at the same time, how therefore they can be directly related to uh, development objectives. Because when we look at in Muslim society is because of lack of institutional development, unfortunately the zakats have been used in the personal level, individuals giving the individuals, but that directly goes into the consumption. And unfortunately, the 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 uh, propensity to consume among the poor is hundred percent. Therefore, it directly goes to consumption. However, how we can develop therefore the necessary uh, necessary capacity to be a enable those people to get empowered through the zakat because that's the whole objective of that. I mean, even if we look at certain categories such as comes to my mind quickly, um, such as if you have domestic animals, you have to give zakat out of domestic animals. Okay, let's say that you have camel, for instance, a number of camel, there are categories, we do not want to go into that, but it would say that your zakat therefore has to be a camel, it has to be a female camel, and it has to be a young camel female camel. Why? Because the way you are giving it, so when you give a young camel, that camel will produce offsprings and therefore mm -hmm. you will have baby camels. So that will increase the um, empowerment of the individual who receives. It's a female therefore so that the babies can uh, come out and contribute to the uh, development of individual and also is the milk. So milk can be uh, uh, as well in an important source of empowerment. So the technicalities, as we can see, directly suggest us that there's a particular objective. Here. What is that objective that we have to empower, uh, emancipate individual from poverty and then empower them. So therefore, on the one hand, yes, the consumption part, but on the other hand, um, the economic part. And therefore, um, our education at the universities in the Islamic economics and finance programs, they have to consider all this economics and the moral economy of uh, Zakat, but at the same time provide the necessary development perspective how Zakat funds can contribute uh, to the um, empowerment and the emancipation in the society for the poor sector of the society as their right has to be returned to them. But when we return them, it has to be returned in such a manner there so that they can be empowered. And therefore, uh, whether we are talking about direct education at the university or training provided, uh, they have to consider such strategies um, in order to be uh, producing um, effective results for us. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the explanation. So uh, for uh, Prof. Patnawati, I want to ask how to be a good professional Amil Zakat in a Zakat institution. Should have any uh, financial financial planner certif certificate or something to support the ability, I mean, uh, to preparing the high qualified uh, Amil uh, in Zakat institutions. All right. Uh, thank you, Asika. Uh, I will re respond to your question, but at the same time, I want uh, I have some point to add on your previous question uh, uh, about the professional Amil. Of course, it doesn't come automatically. Okay, you need to have a training. We need to train. We we need to train the Amil there. Our Amil so that they can be a professional Amil, okay? We need to send them for a course, for example. And as far as we are concerned, for example, while teaching Zakat economics at the university last time, our objective is to bring to the, to, to bring Zakat to the mainstream economy. 
so that it can play the role and can be accepted in the mainstream economy. And with that, our students who take the course, who took the course last time, they are able to play their role as Amil Zakat at the outside after they graduated. Okay, so that is one thing. And actually, uh, if we do not have a professional Amil, and if we do not have a professional uh, Zakat managers, Zakat operators, it will bring a bad effect to the Zakat institution itself. And we will have negative effect to the uh, society, okay? All right, uh, for example, the weak management of Zakat, it will lead to a negative implications of the Zakat institution and it will give a bad name of Zakat to the, to the people. Okay, currently, uh, yes, we know that the number, the amount of Zakat collection is increasing. The number of Zakat payer is increasing from time to time. And uh, during the pandemic last time, okay, and uh, it's good that pandemic happened during the IR 4.0, Industrial Revolution 4.0, where everything is operating in hand, okay? Just by a click of hand, you can get everything. And what happened is that during that time, the Amil Zakat has performed their uh, job electronically, okay, through internet. And uh, due to that, we can see a report it is reported by our uh, Menteri Agama. It is said that it leads to 1,000% high in zakat collection in federal ter territories, okay? 1,000% increase in zakat collection during Hari Raya just now. That is zakat fitra. And where they, they managed to collect amounted to 4.97 million. This is only in Wilaya Persekutuan, okay? And this one is conducted by our Amil. And our Amil is professional in this case where they can operate uh, by using internet. And the uh, zakat payer, they just pay by using internet there online and they manage to increase the payment by 1,000 100% increase, okay, compared to previously. So in this case, it amounted to a big number of money, big amount of money, okay. And it is not a problem to have a high zakat collection, but the problem is if you don't well manage the distribution, you will lose you you will uh, you will lose the trust of the people, okay. There's a lot of question. Whenever something happens, people will ask, where is zakat? What did what does the uh, what the zakat institution institution do? Okay, as if everything is to be born to zakat. Everything is the responsibility of zakat institution. Okay, so this is a challenge to the zakat institution. Okay, they need to have a professional managers. They need to have a, a, a well trained staff in order to manage the zakat distribution properly. In other words, zakat institution do not need to be good in distribution and collection. Not only that, they need to be good. They also need to be seen as to be good, okay? To be seen to be good in order to get the trust of people, okay? So this is the challenge. And as for your question uh, just now of whether uh, you are saying that uh, some of Zakat managers are not uh, effective, they cannot perform their job effectively, let me tell you. That is not an issue. So long as I know in Malaysia, it is not an issue. We have lots of zakat managers, zakat officers who have PhD in economics, PhD in uh, Islamic economics, for example. So there is no longer an issue. But still there is a question how to manage them properly. Okay, we cannot rely, we cannot let them move alone. But also there's a role of the university here where we can collaborate between the university and the zakat institution, okay? So collective effort of the university and the zakat institution. For example, zakat institution, the zakat agency, zakat agency, they find there's a problem, okay? For example, currently we understand that there's a problem dealing with mu'allah, for example, okay? Problem dealing with mu'allah whereby under, within the 10 years, the mu'allah status, okay? Zakat provide everything for them, okay? Zakat provide everything for them, give them assistance, various types of assistance, with the hope that after the uh, 10 years uh, period, they will be independent. They can be independent, uh, everything, and no longer depending on the Zakat institution or Zakat assistant. But what happened is that to the Mu'allah, for example, eh, what happened is that after the term, uh, the Mu'allah period is over, they not move out of the asna, but what happened is that they just move to another asna. 
now they are no longer mu'ala but they go to the poor and needy category still under the mu'ala so this is a question we might ask uh, when we might be asking why is this happen okay and the zakat agencies might want to know why is this so so in this case uh, just what uh, some zakat agencies uh, do in Malaysia zakat institution in Malaysia do they just uh, cooperate with the university to do the research on this issue. That is why I said it's a good collaboration. We need a good collaboration between Zakat institution and the university to manage the, uh, to have a proper management of Zakat among the people. For example, in order to have a good distribution, good collection. And the very sensitive issues is on the distribution side because people might want to know. People are uh eagerly looking what do we do with the zakat collection okay just now prof mentioned that there's a huge amount of money okay yes people know that there's a huge amount of money of zakat collection in malaysia we have millions amount of zakat collection but at the same time people say that there's a lot of poor people out there okay what do we do? so the question is what do we do with this zakat collection okay so again as i said just now we need a proper management of zakat collection and distribution okay and we need to promote people okay we need to educate people not only that they are entitled uh, they they are obliged for zakat distribution uh, it is compulsory for them to pay zakat but it is also that they are entitled for zakat distribution as well okay uh, it is just to uh, fulfill the very objective of zakat itself okay where it says that it is uh, when you have a zakat, when you have zakat people have a place to turn to okay so now do zakat really uh, zakat institutions do they really play this role as a place to turn to some people say they were rejected when they apply okay but is it true okay so i think this one need to be properly organized so that we will maintain people's trust because there are some people say that uh, they get bought already okay uh, they said that they are not going to pay to the zakat institution because of the distribution problem okay so i think a good collaboration between the zakat institutions and the universities by doing research on this issue uh, need to be done okay collective effort uh, between the institutions and the university and another point is that at the same time the people themselves they have to set their mind they have to have a mindset they have to uh, correct their mindset as if all the poverty problem all the problems of the muslim we are going to put the burden on the we are going to put the responsibility on the zakat institution to solve the problem it is not the uh, that is not the situation okay whereby as we know that if we look at the malaysian figures there are 68 percent of the population in malaysia are muslim out of 32 million population, 68 are Muslim, okay? Which is more than, uh, I, we would say that it is a majority of the people in Malaysia are Muslim. And just now, I, I mean two days ago, it is reported that the uh, number of, uh, amount of poverty line 2206 is on in state 2208 as poverty line income. Okay, with this uh, new PLI, what do you expect? We can see, I can foresee that the number of poor, poor households in Malaysia will increase. So are we going to put the responsibility of uh, managing the poor, of relieving the poor uh, to the Zakat institution? Okay. And we know that there are other institutions that collecting money from the people apart from zakat. Zakat is wajib and it is only 2.5%. Okay. People in Malaysia, disregard of they are Muslim or non-Muslim, they are entitled to pay uh, to pay income tax. Okay. And this income tax is 11%. How much is it compared to what, how much do they pay on zakat? So in this case, poverty is not solely uh, the responsibility of zakat. It is. Uh, it exists due to the problem of the system itself, and in that case, the system need to overcome it. Yes, zakat can help, but I think uh, the, society, the society cannot say that. If anything happened, where is zakat? What happened to our zakat collection? All those things. Okay. So again, I will repeat that poverty problem is a problem of the system. It is a system's failure, and it needs a solution from the system itself. And zakat, two point five percent paid by the Muslim is only part of the system okay so those mindset need to be corrected from the people as well okay thank you
Yeah, thank you very much for the explanations. Now, uh, we have been listening to the eminent speakers deliberately and the areas of teaching zakat in the university. Uh, now, we have around 10 minutes before we end these sessions. And then, as I mentioned in the beginning, there will be asked and question sessions uh, that I will select several questions from the audience. Uh, and we'll, uh, so we have, I think we have more, uh, a lot of, a lot of questions here. So, okay, uh, there is a questions from uh, the audience. Based on your experience, normally zakat is taught in which course? Uh, do you have specific curriculum structure on zakat, uh, Prof. Mehmet? Please. Uh, <clears throat> I think I haven't come across a particularly specific course on zakat. Other than in uh, madrasas and religious teachings, they have certain teaching. Uh, but in the modern institutions, modern universities, I haven't come across a particular program. Most of the time, as I mentioned in the beginning, zakat-related issues mentioned either <clears throat> in the Islamic economics as a welfare institution or in terms of Islamic finance. Now we are talking about the Islamic um, social finance part. So it is either discussed there or in Islamic economics. Um, and therefore, um, as I have identified and as uh, Dr. Fatma has identified as well, I think there is a need um, to directly develop um, curriculum um, to look into the, the moral economy, the economics, the political economy of uh, um, Zakat, <clears throat> as well as strategic development and the objective of Zakat, how to deal with the development issues. I, I think <clears throat> that's an important way of uh, approaching the issues. The other um, aspects of uh, zakat, as I mentioned on the operational side, that is a training. Perhaps we don't need to have specific programs for that. Uh, the individuals who wants to work in zakat institutions, they can be trained uh, in-house training or external training can be provided to tackle with it. But the main issue for those leadership and the management, how we can develop the necessary knowledge part, as well as how that knowledge um, can be developed into strategies uh, in, in in relation to um, development part of the story. As mentioned by, by my colleague, how the poverty line has become an issue in the Muslim world. Most of the Muslim countries, including these rich GCC countries, have been going through very difficult times. And therefore, um, the the, and a, the huge imposition and the expectations from Zakat to be able to deliver uh, to the larger poverty sectors in the Muslim societies. And therefore, it requires directly a proper strategic way of understanding how Zakat can be developed and then how it can be dispersed to develop the expected, um, exp expected uh, consequences that we are expecting. And also, there is an uh, other aspect which have to be very careful um, is the business cycles. Now, because of the pandemic, the economies are going down, which implies that the zakat funds will be lesser as well. And therefore, that brings the importance of strategic management of the zakat funds, how important that is. Now, the entire economies, including the Muslim economies, are going down, which implies that individuals who are perhaps who were in the brink of paying zakat will not be able to pay zakat, or those people who were paying higher zakats, now they will pay lesser zakat. And therefore, the zakat institutions um, um, in, in our curriculum, therefore, might emphasize on the developing the necessary strategic mind, how to manage the zakat funds so that you can distribute accordingly, establish the necessary strategies in relation to the business cycle. Because it is very much clear that the states in most of the Muslim countries have failed in providing a proper, proper welfare system. So therefore, zakat is an important strength of the civil society to respond to that. And, and therefore, uh, you need to develop this managerial understanding, the, the qualities of the managers and the leaders who can oversee uh, development of certain strategies. And therefore, that has to be an important part of the education and training. But in some, um, yes, uh, zakat has to be brought into the teaching and proper with a pro proper curricula, rather than just Islamic social financing, uh, or rather than just mentioning in the Islamic economics courses, it has to be identified. Because if riba 
constitutes an important part of teaching. This is one prohibition, but zakat is just the antithesis of that. That has to be properly dealt with in our um, in our education system as well as has to occupy the mind and the behavior of Muslims. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the answer, Prof. Mehmet. And how about uh, we get the explanations from uh, Prof. Fatma Atri? All right, thank you, Asika. And actually, we 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 offered the course of Zakat Economics at Jabatan Sharia and Economics uh, last time. And uh, I would like to share the content of our syllabus uh, briefly. Okay. So what do we what do we include in the syllabus? Is that number one is of course on the concept of Zakat itself, and uh, the importance of Zakat and types of Zakat. Uh, and the positions of zakat in the Islamic financial system, uh, zakat's positions in uh, government budget, okay, and we look at the impact of zakat from economics perspective, okay, from the uh, production, investment, consumption, redistribution, okay, in job opportunities uh, to stabilize the economy and also on investment, okay. And we also taught the student in the syllabus about the role of zakat in socio-economic development of the society, okay, and socio-economic of the uh, country per se. Okay, and in this case, we uh, look at the uh, how do zakat perform or the role of zakat in poverty alleviation or poverty eradication, role of zakat in income distribution, how does zakat play the role as redistributive mechanism to the society, and for especially the role of zakat for uh, rural development in our society, uh, I mean in Malaysia. And also we look at the zakat and the uh, income distribution and uh, income distribution of wealth in the, uh, in the society, the principles and the ethics of income distribution through zakat, okay. And also we look at the uh, national uh, development policy, in national economic development policy, and where do zakat take part in those national development policy. And for your information, in Malaysia, we have uh, various national development plan and Zakat has managed to play the role, uh, play its role in uh, those national development plan, for example, during the DEB and during the DPN, okay? And also we look at the management of the uh, utilization of zakat fund. How do we utilize zakat fund? How do you manage zakat fund? And also we discuss about various issues on zakat, okay, especially on uh, the calculation of zakat, on zakat accounting, okay, on the types of zakat, okay, on the arsenal, all those things, okay. So those are basically the content of the syllabus, our syllabus on the economics of zakat. And apart from, from that, what do we have at the university is that we also have uh, students by research, okay? There are students doing their master's and PhD do, uh, doing research uh, on the issues of zakat, okay? So that is how we manage. And for the issues of zakat in their research papers, in their thesis, it is up to them to explore what topics or which areas do they interested to study in, okay? And I think this is a great opportunity for the student to explore the issue of zakat. Okay, and normally what do the student do is uh, uh, they get the opportunity to meet all the zakat institutions in Malaysia while doing their study on, on uh, their research on zakat. And I tell you, Astika, students when they are holding their uh, metric card as a student, especially PhD students or master students, they are having a big license to communicate to the zakat institution, okay? And this is what do they do? We encourage the students to do research apart from we are offering the zakat course. We are also encouraging people, uh, I mean encouraging students to do research on zakat. And these people, from my experience, normally these are the people who later on uh, will be consulted by the zakat institutions. And some of them are employed by the zakat institutions. And that is why in Malaysia, I find out that professionalism in zakat management is not an issue, not really an issue, okay? Because uh, they are well-trained, okay? And uh, they get assistance. Uh, we uh, collaborated, with, uh, they collaborated with the university in doing research pertaining to uh, almost all zakat issues, okay? Uh, that is about uh, zakat in the university. 
And as I said just now, Astika, that uh, the multiplying effect of teaching zakat at the university is bigger. When later on, when they come out, they will meet better people. Uh, they will meet more people. They can educate the society out there. And holding the title as uh, university graduates, people will trust them. Okay. And uh, uh, that is why I think teaching zakat at the university is very important. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the explanations. Uh, now, Alhamdulillah, we finally come to the end part of the sessions. And in addition, uh, there will be a call of paper on the third International Conference of Zakat. It will be held on 7th to 9th October in 2020. And it is also conducted by Center of Strategic uh, Business and uh, for full paper submissions, please kindly be informed. Uh, you may submit before 1st September then 2020. And uh, please kindly contact the county by finding the website uh, www.iconsiconzbasnas.com. And you may find it, you will find the details uh, of the information. And then uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe the business YouTube channel uh, and click the bell uh, symbols to the, get the notifications. And I'd like to thank you so much for the speakers, uh, for thank the informative you. and interesting perspective. Thank <laughs> you so much, Prof. Mah Prof. Mahmoud and uh, Prof. Padmawati. Uh, and also I would like to say thank you so much for the online audience uh, who has participated in this sessions today. Hopefully, the web series will be beneficial for everybody. Amin. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Asika. Thank you, Dr. Fatmati. Thank you. Thank you.